Well, Dr. Johan Berger is with the Institute of Security Studies. He joins us uh, from our studio in Pretoria. Uh, let's see if we can bring up a visual of uh, Johan Berger. Thank you for joining us. What, what can business uh, take out of these stats? You've said before, uh, your institution has said that, that this is a big burden uh, for businesses. Yeah, thank you. I think the problem for business is that uh, most of these crimes that are uh, um, reported to the police, of course, affects business as well, because you, you work with, with individuals, employers, employers, and all of them uh, are also at risk of, of falling victim to these crimes. Um, the Grand Thornton uh, International Business Report, for example, shows uh, the impact that the high level of especially violent crime has on business in South Africa. It shows, for example, that it has an impact on the number of uh, employees who leave uh, the businesses where they were employed previously. It also has an impact on especially um, the uh, uh, amount of um, business they have to uh, direct towards uh, uh, improving their security systems. Mm. All of this has a very negative effect on, on their business as well. If you look at um, uh, uh, business robberies, for example, what the crime stats doesn't properly show is that in the last decade, uh, this particular crime type um, rose by almost 400 percent in a question of less than a decade. And all of this obviously must have a serious negative impact on, on business. Is there any sense um, of, of how responsive police are or uh, is, is business really relying on, on private security measures which are, uh, as it's been said, effectively a tax on, on business, a further tax? Yeah, there, there's, um, there's a mix of things happening here. I think um, uh, business are increasingly looking at their own uh, devices in terms of uh, improving their security. Um, they are increasingly moving towards private security, but they are also trying their very best to form alliances with uh, police, uh, both locally in the areas where they operate, as well as on a national basis through um, the Consumer Goods Council, for example, through SABRIC and other um, uh, national uh, structures set up to look after the interests of business and they are trying to create conditions conducive to working more closely with the police and in the hope um, of uh, working more closely with them to try and improve the attention that the police give to crimes against business. So I think it is a, it's a mix of both. I think um, it's good that they, that they have that cooperative approach uh, with the police, um, but I think the police isn't as responsive as they should be in many, many areas. For example, with um, aggravated robbery generally, um, the police are lagging behind in terms of a dedicated, focused strategy to deal with this, with this specific crime type. Mm -hmm. um, part of the problem, I think, is, of course, uh, the fact that the police's crime intelligence uh, division uh, has been negatively effect, uh, affected by its own leadership problems as is the police more, uh, on a national level as well. So crime intelligence are not producing enough good and timely intelligence that allows the rest of the police to deal with especially crime syndicates who are involved in these attacks against business. An aggravated robbery uh, where employees are present, so often, like you say, there are morale issues uh, down, down the line. Can we take heart that some interventions do seem to work very well. Um, cash and transit heists uh, dropping substantially, and I think Business Against Crime was involved there um, pushing the microdot technology. So, so there are things that can be done. Oh, absolutely. I mean, there are many positive signs, and the strange thing is that this date, I think that um, the business community through its various structures, such as Sabric, the Consumer Goods Risk Initiative, and various other structures are able, um, and, and private security, we should not forget, are able to put together, uh, in some instances, even better intelligence than the police are currently able to do. Uh, and I'm not uh, forgetting that at times the police do produce good intelligence that allows them to make certain uh, breakthroughs, which, which we welcome. But increasingly, uh, private security, the business community, are resorting to their own um, 
expertise in terms of putting together good intelligence, both in terms of profiling the criminals that are targeting their business and also then sharing this information with the police because they need the police to act on this information. And fortunately, in most instances, I think the police do act on the business uh, or the information they receive from business. But, you know, it's, it shouldn't be like that. I mean, we, we, the police's crime intelligence capability should enable them to produce this kind of, of intelligence. And they do not, they should not be waiting on um, the victims of these crimes to provide them with this kind of intelligence. Like you say, it shouldn't be like that. Uh, and small businesses surely cannot afford uh, the, the resources needed to, to do that. Are they becoming especially vulnerable? Yeah, I think that's the problem. You know, uh, business are increasingly uh, vulnerable to these attacks. And if you look at what the Grant Thornton International Business Report says, it shows how many businesses have, have closed down their business, have lost uh, a, a large number of their employers. The amount of money they have to invest in uh, protecting their business um, uh, rather than uh, um, expanding their business, creating more jobs. So it has a very uh, um, dampening impact on the ability of business to expand and provide more business uh, or rather more em uh, employment. And, and, and that should be the direction that we are taking. So it has an inhibiting uh, impact on business and its ability to grow and provide more jobs. All right, thank you very much for your time. Dr. Johan Berger from the Institute of Security Studies uh, with us from Pretoria.